I watched that fight, I didn't think a crime was happening. And Resto not showing any signs of fatigue. He's still throwing punches a mile a minute. Now that bulge under the left eye of Collins has finally opened up. I just thought he ran into a tough guy with a tough punch, and he took the punch, but, man, this guy can hit because of the damage it was doing to Billy's face. Bruising under both eyes, Billy Collins. He's in bad shape now, though, Ray. It has been a brawl. Look at Resto. Now Collins is hurt again. This fight should be stopped, too. He was just pounding him. You did good, son. You're fighting me hard, actually. And Collins had all the heart in the world and wouldn't quit. And the final minute of the fight, Resto continues to wail away. Collins taking a real beating here. Let me ask you a question. 1983 was the best year of your life, yeah. but also the worst year of your life. Yeah. That was the best year and the worst night. In at 156 and one half pounds, in the blue trunks and white trim, from the Bronx, New York, Luis Resto! In the green trunks with white trim, from Nashville, Tennessee, Round one. Okay. This is the one that's going to lose. Resto countering oh, beautifully, yes, Jake. Yes, yes, yes. See people hanging on the rope. It's oh, a tough, good tough exchange. night. Good exchange. Good, exchange. good, exchange. good left to wow. the right hand by uh, Billy Collins. Collins, right. Good left to the right hand. Good right hand. Good oh, right hand. Oh, good good exchange. Woo. Big go. Oh, he got hit. He got hurt with oh, that, that one. It's staggered him. It's staggered him. Russell staggered him with the right hand. He hit Russell. him again. Oh, He's staggered him with the. Seems to have a swelling over that left eye, Jake, or a cut. I don't know what. They're both tough fighters. Let's hear the ground. Uh, oh. I'm trying to. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Oh, and evidently, oh, and evidently just, I, there's going to be an upset here. It's Steve Tyre either. I thought you know it was in jeopardy tonight, Jake. You think? I know it is. Let's listen. He's doing it right, right now. He sure He's is. keeping it up. He's keeping it up, and that's and that's the only way you can fight this guy. He keeps up that pace. So he's got it. So he's got it. And he's got the right formula. That's the only way. That's the only way. He took a lot of little too late. Yeah, he's getting hit even. That's a tr tremendous oh, pace. Wow. Tremendous pace. Collins is taking a beating now, Jake. Yeah, I mean, a real now, beating. Now, he has, now he, has, he has a little bit okay. Junior middleweight bout, corner of Billy Collins. That blemish, the perfect record, seems to be in jeopardy tonight. He's where I see it, huh? <laughs> Look at this. Coming up for me, can't lose. Do the middleweight fight. Wow. Low, but doesn't mean anything. What a game fighter he is. Yes, he is. Oh, bump. Wow, well, look at this. Jack, there are two Look at this. No. You don't want to stop. With 19, with 17. I bet they get up and give a big hand the whole, the whole place. It was by far the biggest beating Collins had ever taken. And when the unanimous decision was announced, a major upset. Panama lifted his fighter high above the garden ring. Resto, the Puerto Rican kid from the Bronx with a mediocre record, had shocked the undefeated Irish golden boy. But then, as there always seems to be in boxing, came another part of the story. When Resto crosses the ring and gives Colin the Judas kiss, as he's turning away, you can see um, Billy Ray's father's hand. I don't think Billy Collin Sr., from what he told me, even thought that there might have been something wrong with the gloves until the very end of the fight. Otherwise, he would have pointed it out. It was at the end of the fight when Resto went over to congratulate him. 
that he grabbed onto the gloves and held on, and he started screaming for the inspectors, these gloves, these gloves. You can't hold, hold it, you missed it. Hold the pens on him, damn girl. Hold the pens on him, goddamn girl. He didn't do that. What's fascinating is to look at who Louis Resto looks at. Not looking down uh, surprised at the gloves or wondering what's going on or looking at Collins and saying, what are you talking about? But immediately turning to his co-conspirator and waving him over. And Panama just jumps in and starts yelling, those are the gloves you gave us. Those are the gloves you gave us. Are the gloves they gave us. Are the gloves they gave us. Are the gloves they gave us. Resto was quickly taken back to the dressing room where his gloves were removed by referee Tony Perez. They didn't want to take him off. They wanted to go out and I said, no, take him off. Take him off the gloves. I want to see those gloves. I got a complaint here. I want to see those gloves. When I saw the gloves and I handed it to it, I knew that I knew there was something wrong with the gloves. There's something missing. Absolutely. And the decision was unanimous in favor of Luis Resto, but shortly after the fight, Collins's handlers charged that Resto's gloves had been tampered with, that some of the required padding had been secretly and illegally removed, adding extra impact to Resto's punches. The New York State Athletic Commission apparently was suspicious, and they impounded Luis Resto's gloves. I saw two pairs of boxing gloves. Uh, two, two had R on it and two had uh, C on it. I, I observed a hole in the left and right glove that was marked R. Any layman could tell that the glove was tampered with. It's hard to think of a greater crime in boxing than tampering with a glove. In an already brutal sport, removing padding offers a potentially lethal advantage. Two weeks after the bout, a hearing was scheduled by the New York State Athletic Commission. Resto, Panama, and cornermen Artie Curley and Pedro Alvarado would all be called to testify. All four denied everything. All right, it's June 29th, 1983. I'm with the New York State Athletic Commission. Purposes of this tape to record a hearing, Louis Resto versus Billy Collins controversy. The hearing it was almost a foregone conclusion. I think it was, in, in some ways, it was more for the process than it was for the discovery of a truth. Punishment from the New York State Athletic Commission was swift. Luis Resto was suspended indefinitely, and trainer Panama Lewis has been suspended for life. Because the severest action we've taken uh, in the five years that I've been at the commission, but uh, I don't think it unwarranted. 18 days after what had briefly appeared to be his greatest victory, Louis Resto's boxing career was over. But the consequences of that night in the ring for Louis and so many others were just beginning. I called one of my photographers, Ben Sharav, and I said, you know what I want you to do? I know Billy's staying at the Southgate Towers. I want you to get there early in the morning, bring your camera. And he took shots. I said to Ben, I wish you had the kid open his eyes. He said they were open. The next day when he got off the plane, his father was leading him. He was blind. He had some sunglasses on, and he literally had to raise the skin around his eyes to take the sunglasses off. It, it was like a, a horror picture, you know? And, I guess I looked away or something, and I remember the first thing he said, he said, I'm your husband, look at me. The bruises would eventually heal, but doctors diagnosed Collins with a torn iris in his right eye. Weeks earlier, he had been one of boxing's brightest prospects. Now he was being told to retire or risk being blinded. He didn't think he could work. He couldn't do anything. He couldn't hold a job. He had cataracts. We fought all the time. I did sin one night, hit her, and uh, it was a, a uppercut that uh, shouldn't have happened, that's for sure. And I ended up moving in with my parents because I was afraid he's going to kill me. And I still loved him. For the longest, he would just sit in the apartment and smoke and drink and trash the apartment by himself. He wasn't Bill anymore. Nearly nine months after the fight, 
in the early morning hours of March 7, 1984, estranged from his wife and infant daughter, Billy Collins Jr.'s downward spiral came to a tragic end. He was depressed of hearing uh, that he would never fight again. Billy and the guy from next door, a guy named Johnny Duke, uh, come in. And I could tell, you know, Billy was a little drunk. There was a place, a bar, not far from the house where you could shoot pool and, and he wanted us to go. Uh, we chose not to go and he left, he left mad. After they left, of course, Billy beat the crap out of Johnny, got the keys from him. And he told me that Billy looked at him and said that I'm just, I'm just going to uh, kill you or I'm just going to kill us or something. Collins drove off a road less than a mile from his house, landing in a dried out creek below. In the passenger seat, Johnny Duke survived the crash. Billy died on impact. It's like everything was taken that night in the ring. Irish Billy Collins was 22 years old. <laughs>